Magnus's exploration of the jungle temple was a success. Not only did he defeat the powerful golem, he also collected many ancient tablets and tablet fragments to study. Though hard to decipher, one thing was clear from these ancient records. The civilization that built the jungle temple worshipped three powerful entities as gods. The lunar god, the moon lord, the sun goddess, Providence, and the jungle god, Yaren. The legend hypothesized that whoever could defeat these gods could obtain the very powers of the universe. Unfortunately, the tablets that spoke of the summoning rituals were faded and broken. However, Magnus had heard of Moon Lord Cultus worshipping in front of the dungeon. Perhaps if he asked nicely, they would give him the information he was seeking. Or they would attempt to capture and sacrifice him to the Moon Lord. Either way, Magnus would go prepared. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Magnus the Mage episode. We are doing Calamity Death Mode using only magic weapons, and it has been so much fun so far. Last episode, we defeated Astrum Arius, the Golem, and Betsy. And this episode, I want to go find a Martian probe and see if we can get the Martian Madness event going. So let's go to the edge of our world and see about that. Okay, so what I did is I got an ice rod. We're over by our ocean. And with an ice rod, I just am gonna build a little platform in the sky. And this way we can build up a little bit higher. We should be able to find UFOs pretty quickly up here, especially if we put down a Zerg potion or something. Yeah, maybe we'll use a Zerg potion just to get this moving. There we go, almost instantly. And we'll activate it and see it run away. And Martians are invading. Okay, let's head back to base. And let's run to our arena. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we need to turn off Zerg. <laughs> this is so crazy. <laughs> Actually, let's keep this going for just a little bit. Maybe throw some of these down. Oh, we got a Martian saucer going. Okay, yeah, I think Zerg needs to end. <laughs> it's too crazy. These Martian saucers are pretty tricky, so we need to probably focus a little bit more on them. This fire thing that goes around me? That's from the Scoria armor. Whew, we're lagging so much. Okay, we survived. And we got a Xeno staff. What is that? It's a summon, interesting. Oh, we got another one of these guys that just appeared. This time, hopefully it won't be so darn laggy. We need to kill a few of these saucers for sure. There we go. And we got an Electrosphere Launcher. Interesting. That's, I mean, a lot of the stuff from this event is actually a recipe item for a lot of different good things. Ooh, a Sand Elemental. Hopefully we can get the Elemental in a bottle from this. Ooh, <laughs> there we go. Elemental in a bottle. Starting this episode off with all sorts of good stuff. And there we go. We have finished the Martian invasion. And now let's take out a few of these little probes and then we can do our loot magnet to make sure we get everything. We've got the Influx Sword. This is like one of my favorite swords for a melee playthrough. It's so strong. And then we got the Electrosphere Launcher. We've got the Xeno Staff and we have Elemental in a bottle. Unfortunately, we didn't get any of the stuff we need for Mage. We are getting this recipe put together quite well. We've got 
five of the many different aspects to the heart of the elements but I really want to craft the Heart of the Elements once we have a chance, but we need Ancient Manipulator, so we need to do the Cultist event first. Okay, so now that we've done the Martian Invasion, the next boss is the Plaguebringer Goliath, and that's over in the jungle, so we need to go farm up some Plague Cell Canisters. Aside from Yaren, the Plaguebringer Goliath was one of the hardest bosses that I fought in the Anna the Archer series. So I'm definitely interested to see how this all goes. I don't know if the arena we've got down here is going to be sufficient. Depending on how this fight goes, we may need to expand our arena a bit for Plaguebringer. I haven't tried fighting the Plaguebringer above ground. That might be a good way to do that on death mode. I'm not 100% sure, but I think there might be an enrage mechanic. I may have to read about it a little bit. But usually I just use my Plantera Arena. However, the Plaguebringer moves around so much, it's probably going to be advantageous to have more space. So we could start building a Yarn Arena up top and use it for the Plaguebringer. Lots of different options here. So I think this is probably a good spot to throw in a Zerg Potion and farm up a bunch of these Plague Cell Canisters. We have a spawn of one of the miniature plague bringers. Sweet, I think those drop a lot of canisters. Yeah, nine, that's great. In fact, I think I may go ahead and stop recording for a bit and craft an arena here, because it's gonna take a while, but I want to do that for the yarn fight anyways. Okay, I think we've got enough Plague Cell canisters and everything. Ooh, another Plague Bringer, that's great. So here is the new arena, and we got a little Plague Bringer that just spawned. Kill that guy real quick. We've got tons of extra Plague Cell canisters, and the arena's looking pretty good. I mainly just flatten this all out and remove the little islands. And then I've been letting the grass grow back in, used a few jungle grass seeds to kind of get this all growing again. And it's pretty much good to go now. So what we need to do to summon the boss is combine plague cell canisters, iron, stingers, and obsidian. It looks like we can craft a few of these. They don't really cost much. So let's craft nine. That'll be more than enough. And now let's head back over to the jungle. I'm not sure if this needs to be nighttime or if we can fight this during the day, but let's try fighting it during the day first and see if we can do that because then we'll be able to get our uh, tequila sunrise buffs. Okay, sweet. I don't know if that just changed it tonight. No, it just made it dark. We still have our buffs. Ooh, it's the new sprite. That looks awesome. Yeah, this is so much nicer, having extra space to fight this boss. Now that we have the Glamatus Sigil, it's like our mana gets regenerated so much better. Oh my gosh, we're getting slaughtered by this guy. <laughs> oh no! Well, we just got destroyed by the Plaguebringer Goliath, so I think this is going to be a really hard fight. <laughs> Anyways, I think we may just need to practice this fight a little bit, so I'm glad we crafted eight of them. Man, this I'm not even like able to dodge these dashes that it's doing. This is so hard. I can't even like commentate on this. <laughs> I'm just trying to survive.
Luckily, these drop a lot of mana. So we can get our mana back pretty easily. Okay, here we go. Adrenaline. Let's get this damage going. There we go. <laughs> yeah. That's a hard fight. <laughs> but we did it. This arena was crucial, I think. Because I don't even know. We wouldn't have much space to maneuver that fight. Okay, let's open up the bag and see what we got. Ooh, we got a Plague Staff. Interesting. That looks pretty good, actually. We have the Toxic Heart, and then we have the Bloom Stone, and I think that's the main thing we got here. Summons a Baby Plague Bringer Pet. I gotta see that. Oh, that's cute. Okay, let's go see if we can find the lore. Okay, here's the lore. It says, place in your inventory to gain increased wing flight time, but it says it's at the cost of reduced life regen. Ooh, and we got another piece to the Heart of the Elements. It's going to be so easy to get our Heart of the Elements when it, the time comes. Now that we've defeated the Plague Bringer and we've got an awesome new staff called the Plague Staff, let's go ahead and test it out really quick and see the DPS. I have a feeling it's going to be pretty good. And it's doing 7,000 DPS. That is really good. The next boss I want to fight is the Ravenger. So let's see if we can remember how to craft the Ravenger summon. I think it requires like lizard bricks or something. Yeah, the ancient medallion. It requires solar tablets and lizard bricks. So I think we've got a few solar tablets saved up over here. And there we go. We can craft some ancient medallions. And I think a perfect place to fight the Ravenger will be right here where we fought Calamitous. And let's let's see Terror Ray is doing like 5,000 DPS, but we got to stay really close, which is hazardous. And let's see how this spell does. This one doesn't seem to be doing very well because when it gets hit on the hands, the explosion's away from the boss. Okay, let's wait for our mana to heal. And we've got Adrenaline. Let's sp uh, spend that really quick. Well, we actually are doing pretty well. I think the Keel Hall's pretty good for this fight. Maybe I'll throw some Terror Ray in there. I've really never found the Ravenger to be a very difficult boss. His mechanics, he's so like consistent and repeating his same sort of behaviors that if you fly in a big half circle around him, you can usually just stay far away from all of his damage. If you were trying to do true melee, I'm sure this boss fight would be pretty hard. There we go. The Ravenger has been defeated. And I wonder how long this thing will track me. There we go. Uh, the Ravenger lore piece says, place in your inventory to gain an increase to all damage, but at the cost of reduced wing flight time. So let's see how much it reduces our wing flight time. Oh, it's actually not that bad. So let's see what it does to our damage. We're at 245, and now we are at 236. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna use it though, because I do like having our flight time where it is, but it's good to know about in case we have a boss that doesn't require a lot of flight time. So now we've got the Ravenger treasure bag. Wow, it gave us so much stuff. We got the Senex wings and the Senex dress. Ooh, and we have a magic spell right here. That's cool. I like that. Oh, and then we have a flesh totem. I think that got a resprite. 
I love the core of the blood gods, so we definitely need to keep the flesh totem. And then we have a summon, we've got ranged, we've got a melee weapon that's pretty sweet. And we have a consumable that permanently makes rage mode do 15% more damage. Yes, please. We've got a bunch of materials, and that's pretty much it. I know a lot of people have mentioned that we should do magic storage, and I've definitely heard you on that, and we'll be doing magic storage on the next modded playthrough. And the reason I'm not switching to magic storage on this is because we've already got everything kind of built in a way that is conducive to using just normal treasure chests, and so in the next series we'll do magic storage from the get-go, and that way we can design our base um, from the ground up for using magic storage. The next boss fights are actually the Lunatic Cultists with the Lunar Events, Astrum Diaz, and Duke Fishron. So <laughs> I think I want to wait on Duke Fishron for just a little bit. I'd rather start doing the events and get our Ancient Manipulator first. Hello there, Cultists. How are you doing? I'm going to set my spawn. Actually, I don't even bother with it. I think we'll be fine. Okay, so for this fight, let's switch it to day so we get the buffs from this Tequila Sunrise. And then I think we're good to go. Oh, we have this spell as well, so we can try using this. Okay, so we need to figure out the, the right way to fight this guy. I think the Terror Ray is going to be kind of my choice here because it just seems to do such consistent damage and on a boss that moves this much, you really need that consistency. Such a fun fight. I love the visual effects of this fight. And this also helps kill his adds and his clones, I guess. Where is he? Oh, we're actually already to 30%. Well, that's great. We've almost got him. Just a couple more hits. There we go. Perfect. Let's kill this dragon. And we have our Ancient Manipulator. Now we have so much stuff we can do with it. That feels great. Ooh, we have an Eidolon Staff. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. What? This is such a cool spell. I love it. And it, I think it shoots through the ground. I'm not sure. Let's try killing the slime through the ground. The power of ancient cultist resonates within the staff. Fire a spread of ancient light and has a chance to fire a spinning ice cluster. Yes, love it. And now we have our ancient manipulator. I am so happy about that. Let's go see which pillars have spawned. So what ones are we getting right now? We're getting Stardust. Yeah, I don't think Stardust is really that important. Maybe we'll go back to base and hit this one up later. Yeah, I don't really care to do Stardust just yet. Um, I think on the map it shows. Okay, we got Nebula right over top of the Astral Biome. That's kind of cool. It kind of looks like the Nebula has like done a Nebula corruption on this area. And then we've got the Vortex Pillar over here and the Solar Pillar in the jungle. Excellent. So we'll just wait on the solar pillar. I think that'll be the last one we do. One thing I really love about Calamity is being able to run through these pillars much faster because we're more powerful and we can handle the damage that these guys do. And we're getting some meld blobs, which I believe help us craft some pretty impressive wings. 
there we go. It's time to destroy the pillar and get our nebula stuff. Boom. That's great. Okay, let's use our loot magnet. Pull all that in. Looks like a lot of good stuff there. All right, now we can head back to base and sort through this. So now we can craft the Nebula Arcanum and we can craft the Nebula Blaze. Other things we can craft are meld bars with hollowed and ectoplasm. So let's craft a few of those and see what we can do. And it looks like we can craft the Xerox wings, but I'm not sure how much faster they are. It looks like the acceleration multiplier is pretty good. So we might as well craft those. Ooh, we can do the Tome of Fate. Yes, that sounds great. Oh, we can actually craft a cosmic rainbow. We just need the rainbow gun and life alloy. And we can actually craft life alloy. Man, there's so much good stuff that we can do now. So what I'll do in between episodes is farm up a hollowed key so we can craft this at the beginning of next episode. I think that would be awesome. But for now, let's go craft our book with the meld bars. Here we go, Tome of Fates. Let's see what this does. Sweet. And now we have the Nebula spells. And we've got the Arcanium. Oh man, this looks so cool. So many good spells now. I think this is a great place to end today's episode. We defeated the Martian Invasion. We defeated Plaguebringer Goliath, the Ravenger, and the lunatic cultists next episode we'll be knocking down some of those pillars and getting ready to fight duke fishron astrum arius and the moon lord lots of good stuff coming up so if you're enjoying this series be sure to like and subscribe so you can see the next episodes thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time